Adobe just released a huge new update for Adobe After Effects. It's a feature which I've been waiting for since years and now it's finally out. And in this video, I quickly want to show you how you can use this feature, how far we can take it and what its limitations are. But first of all, what is this new feature for Adobe After Effects? Well, if you now use the beta version of Adobe After Effects, you can import 3D models in After Effects. Mind blowing, right? You can really rotate it, move around it and light it however you want. So let's take it to a test. Just use your phone and record some footage. And if you have one, you can also use a 360 camera to capture your own HDRI. Because yes, HDRIs are now supported in After Effects as well. But if you don't have a 360 camera, that's absolutely fine. We can also just download some from the internet. To best showcase this new feature, I decided to film a little levitation effect. As shadows on the ground are not supported yet, so it's really hard to make objects look good that are on the ground. And with the levitation effect, we of course don't really need any shadows, especially on a day like this. So it's a really good workaround. But with that, it's still kind of limited and I hope they're going to add shadows soon. Another limitation is that you really can't use any metal objects. I mean, you can use metal objects, but I found them looking rather unrealistic. So I decided to not use them here in my case. Just take a giant rock or something, which I can then levitate and throw away. All right, so here we are in the beta version of Adobe After Effects. You can exit it in your Creative Cloud app. Here under beta applications, just select it and download the beta version of Adobe After Effects. Once you've done that, you can open up Adobe After Effects and get started. So first of all, um, if you have a moving shot, we of course need to track our camera. I assume you already know how to do it, but in case not, I'm just quickly gonna show you how to do it. So first of all, we just wanna remove everything that could confuse the tracker. So in that case, that would be me as I'm moving and then the tracker would maybe track my hands and would get confused as I'm just moving very differently from the background. So we're just gonna take the pen tool and draw a rough mask around our subject. Once you've done that, you can just select the footage, press M and set the mask mode to none so we can see it better. And then just select the mask, right click, track mask, and then method position, just click play here and After Effects should take care of the rest. So once the tracking is finished, you can scrub to the footage and see if the tracker did a good job. Um, in my case, it shifts here a little bit at the end, but that's absolutely fine. But if you have some bigger problems and the tracker completely loses you, and you can also just do the tracking by hand. After that, you can set the mask mode to subtract, select the footage and press Ctrl Shift C, pre-compose it, and then apply the 3D camera tracker effect and an advanced check detailed analysis. Once the tracking is finished, you can just double click on the comp and press M and set the mask to none. Now we have a lot of tracking markers here on the ground and we can just scrub to the video and check if everything sticks fine. But um, here, when the camera moves fast, the tracker has some problems um, but it seems like it uh, even works then. So I'm just gonna select a position where the circle is flat on the ground. Um, just press on the position and right click on it and select set ground plane and origin. Right click again and select create solid and camera. Now we can scale up the plane and check if the tracking has worked, which it seems to do. It's not perfect, but we can work with it. If you have a similar result, we can move on by downloading our 3D model. I chose this rock here from Sketchfab, as the link is in the description down below. Um, so if you want to use this one as well, you can just go here and download the 3D model. Or if you want to use a different one, that's also not gonna be a problem. Just keep in mind that After Effects currently only supports three uh, file types, which is OBJ, GATF and GLB. So if your model has one of these formats, you can just download it here and then just drag and drop it into After Effects. And now After Effects automatically created a folder with the model inside. And if you use an OBJ, the textures also need to be in this folder here. With GLB and GLTFs on the other side, textures are already included in one file, so you just need to import this. Next, we're just gonna drag and drop it here in the timeline. 
and then After Effects asks us to name it. I'm just going to name mine Rock. And then we can also scale it up. So if you look here, we can already see the size. Um, I make mine here a little bit bigger. Um, here maybe uh, 4000. We can always change it later, but um, this will be a 100% scale later. So if we set it now, we won't have this huge numbers later in the timeline. Um, and once you're happy, you can just click OK. And yeah, this is quite an unusual view, um, like a 3D model in After Effects. You could do it with Element 3D before, but now it's even better as you have this box here around the 3D model. So you can really understand from which perspective you're looking at it. And I feel like it's also a lot faster than Element. So I'm just gonna rotate my rock and move it here on the x-axis. Maybe I scale it down a little bit more. Here, um, 80 maybe. And then I can like move it up and just uh, press play to get a quick preview. So like you can see, it renders uh, really, really fast and really, really well. Um, it's not perfect. Um, we also can't really make it 100% perfect as it's not ray traced, but a rock is a rather simple object, so we should be able to get pretty close. And the first step to do this is just to create a new light, and then just select a new environment light, which is new in the beta version of After Effects as well. And um, the other lights currently don't support uh, shadows yet, so we will have to use this environment light. And what this environment light essentially does, is just using the light information from an HDI and casting the light on the rock. If you don't know what an HDI is, it's basically a 360 image with a lot of brightness information. So if I just turn down the exposure on this image, the bright spots stay bright longer and the dark spots get dark sooner. And you can create such an image, for example, with a 360 camera, if you just take 10 images in different exposures and then later merge them together on the computer. If you don't have a 360 camera, however, it's not a huge problem as you can just download HDIs from Polyhaven, for example. Just search for an HDI that matches the light of your scene and also the colors. And then just download it in 4K HDR. And then also just drag and drop in the timeline. Here you can look at your HDI again and then just turn off the visibility, move it to the bottom and then select it as an environment source. And yes, you can see how drastically this changes the lightning on your 2D model. If you look at it before, we just had a strong light from one direction but this is an overcast day. And now we also have this diffuse light. But before we will color match the rock, um, I'm first going to animate it. So you can just select it and do, do your animation however you want. Something like this. And then move it again down at the beginning. So it now moves up. And then I'm just gonna right click at the last keyframe and select Easy Ease In as I wanted to smoothly stop here um, at the top. So I'm just gonna wait a little bit. Right here, it should uh, start move. So one frame before, I'm gonna create a keyframe and then just go a couple of frames back and then just drag the rock out of the scene. Yes, something like that. And then we can just delete the rock after it's out of the frame. Now it's perfectly balanced in the air, but I just want to make it shake a little bit. So we all click on the stopwatch and just write wiggle, open brackets, um, one comma seven maybe. You can just experiment around with these values. But like this, it has a subtle wiggle effect. Next, I'm going to duplicate the camera Select the camera, um, the HDI, the rock, and the environment light, and press Ctrl Shift C and create a pre comp called rock. And now we put all of these layers into one single layer because currently you can't apply any effects to the 3D models, so we just need to pre compose them. But now we can do whatever we want. So um, I'm just going to add a curves effect. And um, now we could go into red channel and move that up and stuff. But if you have some problems with tweaking the colors in the correct way, um, there's another way to do it. Um, or if you're colorblind, this could be also really useful. So if you just go down here, you can solo the red, green and blue channel 
Um, so I'm just gonna start with the red channel and then select red at the curves effect. So I filmed on gravel so that I can just steer the colors from the gravel and match the rock accordingly. So I just need to look at the gravel and then match it to the rock. Then just select the green channel and repeat. Once you're finished, just select RGB, look at the result and maybe change some settings. So I'm just gonna go with this and I think this looks a lot better. But one very important thing is still missing, which of course is the shadow. So we can just enable the solid again. I select it, go to layer, solid settings and search for a dark shadow in your video and just select it. Maybe go in here and make it even darker. Um, call it shadow. And now we can still go in the rock, pre-comp, press P, um, copy the position, go back and paste it on the solid. So now it's exactly in the rock, but as we pre-compose the rock, these layers can't interact with each other anymore. Um, so I'm just going to move it down at the bottom. And yes, I also copied the keyframes from the rock. So we of course need to select them as well and also select the expression and delete them as well. Also the scene just got a lot slower. I think it's because we pre-composed the rock. Um, I think it's a bug and they are still going to fix it in the future. So this should work. And uh, we can now just take the pen tool and draw a rough mask here um, in shape of the rock. Once you're finished, just add a Gaussian blue effect and make the shadow diffuse. If you shoot in direct sunlight, it's of course a lot harder, which is why I would recommend to shoot in an overcast day as well. Um, I think 700 is a good value here. And then just create a keyframe for the blurriness and also press T for the opacity. I create a keyframe here and then just increase the blurriness and decrease the opacity. In my case, I just take 20% here and 50% at the beginning. And then at the end here, of course, the keyframe the shadow to move out. Perfect. So now it's only about the details. Um, motion blur isn't supported yet. Um, but we can add a pixel motion blur effect to the 2D layer basically and put it in front of the curves effect. Um, and then After Effects just calculates uh, the motion blur. Maybe still set the shutter samples up. Um, 16 should work fine. We could also add some blur to the rock. So just add a fast box blur, maybe 0, 0 0.1 because if you shoot it with a normal camera, it's also not perfectly sharp. Uh, but I shot this one with a phone and phones tend to over sharpen your image. So maybe 0.1 is a little bit too much, but feel free to play around with these settings and match it to your own footage. So from here on, you can really do whatever you want. If you want, you can add a noise effect, um, maybe set it to one to also add some noise to the object. And um, you can also create an adjustment layer the curves effect and um, put it some contrast or something or apply a lot um, so do whatever you want with the scene have some fun with it and then you should end up with a result similar like this please do let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see next and then I still have a video recommendation for you um, this video here took me over 30 days to make um, and I tried to produce a viral TikTok in that video and if you want to see if that worked then just click here and check it out for yourself.